From little chiefs to big chiefs to champions. The quote by BT Sports commentator Nick Mullins as Exeter lifted their first Premiership trophy sums up the journey the club itself has experienced over the last 20 years. Yet, along the way, the club has consistently supported the city of Exeter and the people of the South West, which, in turn, has helped strengthen the club and cement its place as one of the biggest clubs in the country. You don't have to turn the clocks back too far to remember a time when life wasn't so glorious for the club. Only as early as 1996 were Exeter Rugby, as they were called back then, battling it out in English Rugby's fourth tier. They rebranded themselves as Exeter Chiefs in 1999, which kick-started their relentless advance to the top. We worked our way up over a number of years to you know, having numerous promotions, which were fantastic days and great seasons for us. Spent a lot of time in the Championship, second tier of um, of the competition, you know, just that little step away from what is now, you know, what is now the Premiership. And we finished second in that league a few times and missed out on promotion. And uh, always seemed to come up a little bit short from the, the relegated Premiership team that year. The club's ascendancy to the top of the game hasn't been by coincidence or fluke. One factor that many former players and coaches acknowledge is the club's reliance on young homegrown players. Exeter Chiefs is one of the largest player development programmes in England, spanning two of the country's biggest counties in Devon and Cornwall. One such player who has profited from the programme is Stuart Townsend, a recent product of the academy who is now a regular name in the first team squad. So I started off in the academy around about 15. I uh, went to Ivorybridge School, um, kind of was still in the academy, kind of lived with Rob Gibson, who was the academy coach at the time, and kind of just from there, just kept training with Exeter, getting little bits here and there, and um, yeah, I loved it, and then got my first academy contract when I was, I think I was 17, 16, 17, and then from there on, I haven't really looked back. There's a lot of people who come through the academy and have gone on to do amazing things, and I think it just shows the the amount of time the club put into the academy and the, the young players around, and it's paying off for them really because they've got they've got superstars that have come through the academy. So I think it just shows what what a great setup they have. But it was the 2015-16 season that proved to be consequential for Exeter as a city and a club. Exeter Chiefs, who finished second in the league, beat London Wasps in their first playoff semi-final appearance to set up a visit to Twickenham for the Aviva Premiership final. In a massive occasion for the club, the city and the county, the Chiefs were overawed, undone and were left on the losing end of a 28-20 defeat. We came off the back of losing to Saris in that Premiership final um, and probably reacted a little bit wrongly to it um, by congratulating, over-congratulating ourselves for making a final, but we hadn't really one of the things. At the start of the next season, Exeter Chiefs were still shell-shocked from their Premiership final defeat as they won only three of their opening ten matches, leaving them seventh in the league and 13 points adrift from leaders Saracens. It was at this point where the Exeter Chiefs needed the backing of the community and its supporters the most. This selfless community approach can be seen right across the Exeter Chiefs brand. Exeter Chiefs boasts one of the largest and most established foundations in the Premiership helping charities and small businesses through a variety of different fundraising projects. Since its launch in 2011, the Exeter Chiefs Foundation has raised over a million pounds. very privileged that on match day we've got a huge amount of people here and then we've also got um, a collection of amazing charities within the area um, that we want to try and help give to really. And they're all, you know, they're all fairly local, local charities because Exeter and Devon is, is home for us really. And, um, Fundamentally, first and foremost, those are the charities kind of we want to see do well first. We try to do a huge amount with the Exeter Foundation uh, in order to make sure that we maximise at the end of the year what's been given to them. The club wants to improve the amount of participation in the sport at grassroots level. This is spearheaded by the Community Development Department. So the role of the Community Department is to enact some form of social change or social engagement using rugby as the main tool. We do that throughout our national and regional programmes. And whilst not only does it engage people within rugby, but it also develops the next Exeter Chiefs fans. The club's change in approach and increased support had a profound effect on the field. And there's a real turning point moment in that season where we kind of just took hold of it really. Um, players and coaches we just kind of thought right let's get our house in order really and make sure 
we start controlling things we're able to. A last minute win against Saracens in a dramatic semi-final at Sandy Park, followed by a stoppage time victory against Wasps in the final meant Exeter were crowned champions of England. It was a massive high for the club and it just shows what they've been through and how they've, how they've risen. Since their successes, the club continues to feed back into the community with some of their players, like Kai and Stewart, taking the time out to help coach nearby clubs. The time span of a professional rugby player is relatively short, so, and it's not like football where you probably knock on the head and kick back afterwards. So ultimately there's always going to be um, a role that you're going to have to try and get yourself into post-rugby. Um, a lot of players look at the co coaching as a, as a genuine option. Um, and they want to you know, develop their skills. And the only way to do that is by, by doing it. So we're fortunate that we've got a lot of clubs in and around the area that guys will look to get involved with and, and help out with. Um, the knock-on effect of that is the clubs are also getting good coaches along there. Um, so hopefully that, that helps with their development. This symbiotic relationship that the club has with its supporters and the local community is unlike any other in the Premiership. The club's achievements and popularity have made it into a flagship project in the South West which has had a knock-on effect for Exeter as a city. The rise of the club uh, kind of replicates the rise of the city as well. Uh, as a city, Exeter's growing, and as a team, the Exeter Chiefs are growing massively and improving year on year. The rise of Exeter Chiefs has made a massive difference putting Exeter really on the map. Um, obviously, there are other things like the Met Office and the university, but, but the fact that they're on uh, television uh, every, every single weekend, the name of Exeter gets raised all over the world. Exeter Chiefs' astronomical rise to success has been nothing short of inspiring, but this is just the beginning. Having started the recent season in similar dominant fashion and aspirations of Europe twinkling in the minds of players and supporters alike, who knows what level this club will shoot to next.